So here's an alternative approach to setting a goal for your retirement number. And it's just simply just to set a certain number of rental properties and then work it backwards from there. So let me give you an example. Let's say that you, all you had to do is buy, you had a goal of buying seven rental properties. So even if you have no rental properties right now, your goal over the next two or three years would be to buy seven properties. And let's say that the average cost of those was $120,000 per property. That would be all of your expenses, the purchase price, the closing costs, the repairs, everything else. And let's say for a moment that your, your goal is to pay those properties off. It's not gonna happen on day one. You, know, you might have to use some leverage, some debt to buy the property right up front. But eventually you're gonna reinvest your cash flow from the rental properties. You're gonna save money from your job. Maybe you flip a couple houses on the side. Whatever you can do, you're gonna to try to get those seven properties paid off. And what, but when it's all said and done, your seven properties, each of them rents for $1,250 per month. And when you pay all your expenses, it has about $750 per month left over after your taxes, insurance, maintenance, capital expenses, things like that. All right, so here's what those numbers would look like on this very simple goal. So you have seven houses times 120,000. You had to come up with over the years between your purchase price, down payment, everything, all the money you had to pay off on the debt, you had to come up with $840,000 in principle to, to buy all those and to pay them off. You also have, now that you haven't paid off though, you have seven houses times $750 per month, that's $5,250 per month. And the, the way I got that, remember this is $1,250 in rent minus all the taxes and insurance and maintenance and everything else. This is what's left over, your net operating income on each of your rental properties. And so you're gonna be able to put that in the bank because you don't have a mortgage payment anymore. And so what's that mean total? 5,250 per month times 12 means you have $63,000 per year. I wanna pause here for a second. Remember those numbers we were talking about earlier? People said, hey, 60,000 bucks a year, 80,000, 50,000. This is kind of right in the middle of that, that number that we said was about the average that a lot of people needed to cover to be financially independent. And the reason I wanna pause is look at this, seven houses, seven houses. It, a lot of the times on bigger pockets on the podcast and you know, on my podcast and other places, we, you, know, you hear about these people who buy 100 properties, 1,000 properties, tons of, tons of deals, and, and it kind of seems like, well, that's successful. That's what you need to be successful. But look at this. Somebody has seven houses. They pay them off. They make $63,000 per year. What could somebody do with their time if they had $63,000 per year coming in? And how much time would it take them to manage seven houses? What do you think? Y'all, Some of y'all have some rental properties out there. Could you... Can you, can you get that done, especially if you had a property manager? Could you do a lot of other stuff with your time? I and mean, would you be spending all your time managing these seven houses or could you have some flexibility to, to do some other stuff? Time yeah. and some flexibility. Yeah, so you, you think you could, you, could, you could have some time to do some other stuff. So I just think that's a really cool way of looking at it. And wh whether you, your number 63,000 or 120,000, you, you can change the goal. You can houses versus seven houses. My main point here is that Sometimes you just got to look at the basic math and say, this is reasonable. Like I, I can do this. Like this is not, uh, you know, it might be a long way. It might be five, 10 years from now before I can get there. It might be 15 years, but this is not a real complicated goal. It's just how many rentals do I need? How do I get them paid off? And then just patience and persistence and just getting it done. That's what, that's what I found both in my own experience and I'm still, you know, working. I'm not exactly where I want to be, but we've got enough cash flow where we're, it was paying the bills and it was it was a lot of this just plodding along making mistakes buying some bad properties to get rid of those buying some good ones keeping those and just and just continuing to learn and continuing to move forward and that's where all the tactics come in so like there, there's a lot of important things about how to buy properties how to finance them how to do all this but this tonight was my hope was just to focus on the big picture like, where are you trying to go like, what's the mountain you're trying to climb because uh, sometimes there's a there's a metaphor that you know, you get, you get a really good ladder and you start climbing up that ladder, which is like your real estate investing business, but you get to the top of the ladder and realize that you put it against the wrong building. Like you tried to, you're trying to climb against other people's goals. You're trying to, you're trying to compete with other people on Instagram because they bought a hundred houses or a thousand houses. When all you really need to do is just get enough to do what you want to do and go travel the world or be a teacher or do what matters. All those things that we talked about earlier. And I think that's the point is whatever number you need to be happy to make uh, to make money like that's that's the big deal